feel really privileged. We're ultimately getting a chance to decide the future of our country. It's a pretty big honour. I mean, we can get married, join the army, yeah, have a, have a child, but we can't vote. I think that's not fair, so I think we should always get to vote. I was quite happy with that because this is probably the biggest decision we're going to make as a nation, like, in a pretty long time. This is a very important referendum because 16 and 17 year olds are going to get the vote for the first time and so they're going to have a major influence on the decision that is made by the people of Scotland. And so obviously young people will be thinking about all the issues that concern them. They'll be concerned about issues to do with the currency, the economy, cultural and identity issues about what it means to be Scottish or British but they'll also be thinking about other issues like higher education which clearly is of great importance to them since they're the citizens of the future it's their education that is on the line here. just widen your horizons more, you would have more opportunities, you'd be able to do more things, you'd have a wider range of jobs that you could do, you wouldn't be limited to sort of unskilled jobs. No, I'd, I'm quite excited to like get away and like have a new atmosphere because like it's been stuck here like I don't think I would like it as much because I'd just feel the same but if I got to go like up to Aberdeen or go, even go down to Wales it'd be amazing to have that experience. You're kind of getting out of there and learning new social skills and living skills and yeah. it just changed a complete change of atmosphere. Yeah, college kinda is like baby steps to uni. Mm -hmm. Like it kinda gains your like gives you more confidence. Yeah. Like I feel a bit more confident, like I'm really more ready to learn from when I came here. When you go to university you do get the level of a degree. So when you are applying for a job it kind of attracts you more to the employer. If everyone else around you is so enthusiastic about a subject, you will be as well. Mm -hmm. And it, oh, I just can't wait for you now. The present fee arrangement in Scotland is one which has no Scottish domiciled student paying fees for higher education. And because of our membership of the European Union, it means that European Union students can come to Scotland and have education on a very different basis to their counterparts from elsewhere in the United Kingdom, where those from elsewhere in the United Kingdom do pay fees when they come to Scotland. The uh, Scottish Government is making contributions to the uh, individual universities in order that there can be a fee-free regime applying in Scotland and that obviously is money which is coming from the public purse uh, and is a contribution which is made against a very strongly held principle by the Scottish Government that access to education in Scotland should be free. A very different policy has been adopted in England where students can pay up to £9,000 a year for their tuition. I think that's quite a tough one. I'd like to say the government, but I mean, we're pretty strapped for cash as it is. And they can't pay for everyone. Yeah. 
but if it wasn't for the government paying then it would definitely not be an option for as many people as it is, I don't think. I think the SNP had a quote saying along the lines of that education should be judged on the ability to learn, not the ability to pay. So I'd quite agree with that, that the government should pay for our education and not the people that are getting taught. I think it's a good system, but um, whether I agree with it is like different because I feel that there's some people out there who could definitely easily pay for higher education. And I don't think it, if they keep taking money off the government to go to a university, then eventually we have to stop because we can't fund it. The tuition fees come out of taxes, so people who don't go to university are just playing, paying for something that other people are benefiting off and they're not. I think it should be more targeted towards people who live in deprived areas because they're the ones really that if you look at it, have more potential than someone goes to a private school, let's say they get the same grades or whatever the private school person have had all the help they can get was deprived school child had to work with limited resources. I think they should definitely be universal to everybody. I mean, tuition fees especially because I feel that education is a right, not a privilege. Also for people to realise that the fact that we don't have fees in Scotland doesn't mean that students emerge from universities with no debt. In fact, they're going to have quite significant loans for living expenses, um, which it, that's true across the UK. could always be there in the back of your head but I think if you want to go uni then it's something that you have to do. Yeah like it's expensive to go like even though like, we don't have to pay to tuition. I think if I do go to uni then I will have to get a job as well because like I'm not feeling like the most of Richie's family like I'm just normal <laughs> and then, so I'll have to help myself a wee bit as well. I think it's quite scary like to think that by furthering your education you can end up like great amounts of like debt. Yeah. They say that university is free, but it's, it's not really. <laughs> I think here we're really lucky, but then on top of that, there's you know accommodation and everything else, so it does all add up, even in Scotland. Well, I've taken out a student loan this year. It's a wee bit daunting having you know debt and only being 18, but you don't need to pay it back until you're earning over a certain amount, and even then, it's not too much you pay back each uh, month, I think, so it's not too bad. Different fees policies in different parts of the UK impact on cross-border flow, that is the movement of students between the various nations in the UK. Traditionally, a significant number of English students have come to study in Scotland, while somewhat lower numbers of Scottish students have gone to study in England. However, since the increase in the fees in the rest of the UK, we're seeing lower numbers of Scottish students going to study in England. We're also seeing increasing numbers of English domiciled students choosing to study in Scotland. We need to consider what this might mean for Scotland if fewer students from Scotland are choosing to go and study elsewhere and whether that means there is any loss of, in terms of the experience they get from studying outside of their own country. I don't think I'd go to university probably if I needed to pay that much money because I just, I don't, like coming out with like £27,000 a day. Like, and you don't even know if you're guaranteed a job at the end of it. Like, that's really uncertain. I just think because it's, it's like very expensive to go like down to England, and like it would be much easier if I was at home and I had still had like the support from my mum and dad. If we'd pay like nine grand for a year like down in England, I don't think I'd be able to. Especially from the area we're from. And I feel like almost 
sorry for people in England that like you have to pay for it because it is it's really expensive. No, I, don't, I don't think it's very fair like, at all because like we're both like part of the UK. But I think it should be like equal for like all students to be able to have a free education. I think unless it was somewhere like Cambridge or Oxford, which has got a really good reputation, then cost is a factor, and I wouldn't want to pay for something that I for a degree that I could just as easily get in Scotland for free. Yeah. There's no reason why you shouldn't want to stay in Scotland when it comes to the actual standard of universities. We have something like four or five in the top 200, which is pretty high considering we're such a small country. So I would say that overall we live in a pretty good place to go to university. So over the last 30 years, things have changed massively in, in, in terms of universities in Scotland. Uh, we've seen a huge increase in, in the number of people that, that are applying and getting in. And this year, there was a, a record number um, of people, of uh, students getting into universities in Scotland. But what we've been looking at over the last couple of years is, is who those people are. I think frustratingly, what we've seen is that while, while the amount of people has, has increased enormously, the, the kind of demographics that are going hasn't changed. That, that much and you're still seeing a lot of the same kind of private school students getting into kind of privileged elite universities. People from more affluent areas and better schools are more likely to get the exam results. So people from more, well, less well-off areas are going to have to work harder to get there, and it's to get to the same place, really. It seems to be the better the university, the more difficult the entry requirements. <laughs> In terms of the grades, but you still get the sort of sense it's more about who you know rather than what you know. In some universities, in certain courses like medicine, for example. Sometimes I think it is, but I think they're like quite prejudiced towards people with bad backgrounds. And if they came from schools like this, like this is just a public school, um, so there's always going to be like a separation between public and private schools. At the moment, I think there's a system in place that um, state schools, they if you get the same marks in a private school and a state school, that they um, like they take they're more likely to accept the state school marks because it's harder to get those results. First, I think a non-private school is actually better because in a private school, you're like. They've got that structure there for you. You have to, they make you learn, like you have extra sessions to learn. But then at uni, nobody's there to push you. You have to do it yourself. Then what if you've been at a normal school, you've already had to push yourself. So that's natural to you. A lot of people have a lot of prejudices towards different areas. People who live in places like Springburn, they see that as, you know, a, maybe a, a less um, able individual than someone who's from a, a more well-off area. I don't personally think that everyone has the same chance to go to university, but the families that you know, can't afford to put money aside for their children to go to university or kids that can't get jobs to try and raise the funds is, are really going to struggle for the books and the travelling, even if they don't stay away from home. I think you know, getting into courses, yes, because we're all given the same opportunities in the school and if you've got the grades then you got a good personal statement and they'll get in. But it's people who they can afford it when they get down there. It's probably yeah. might put them off. And if your parents haven't gone to university then it makes it more of a sort of mystifying process. involved in the REACH programme which took me to a week's taster at Glasgow University which was really helpful and it just gave me the lifestyle experience of being at university like uh, living there and just uh, coping my own. I enjoyed meeting like, people from different backgrounds 
Like there were students there for private schools, but there were also students that were from like, this area to show that people from here can go to schools like that and do well. Yeah, it made it realer because before it was just like an idea and then when I went to sleep thing it was like I could do this, like this is what I want to do, this looks like fun. Well, it's the experience of actually being there uh, in classes with other students and things like that and we got our mentor who is actually at university right now and we could talk to him about it and things like that. Well, it made me realise that I really wanted to go to university. It made me realise that that was something I had to do. So again, the question would, is here, if Scotland were to be independent, could it come up with a more just social settlement so that all students, irrespective of social class background, had an equal chance of getting into particular universities? And I think that, that will be an important question for people to think about. It's about what sort of country Scotland might be if it were independent. Yeah, it will be my first vote. Um, I'm 17, so it affects me. Well, as something that the Youth Parliament strongly supported, we were over the moon to hear that it was going to be in place for the referendum. I'm going to say I'm undecided at the moment because I think it's just too early to completely set your mind on one answer because there's not nearly enough information being given to, given to young people um, about which way, like what the consequences of voting either way. I'll be voting for independence. Yeah, I just believe that a country should be governed by its own people and the decision shouldn't be made by another government. Yeah, I'm voting no because I feel like we don't know enough about it and it's taken too long so I've lost a lot of trust and what's happening. Yeah, I, I think that the Scottish Government in general has um, made good decisions, the tuition fees being one of them, and I'd like to see more of that. I'll be voting to stay in the UK. I love being British. And I don't, I, I think it could be just so risky taking such a big step like this. It could just go so pear shaped. I think the two, like the campaigns, are just fighting against each other in fear and fearmongering, and I wish they'd just tell us what would happen. I also think that a lot of people will vote no because they're scared of what might happen, if because they're scared of the change. Even like, I know that my heart says, like, yes, we should be independent, but my head's like, well, no, we shouldn't. Um, because I just don't know what sort of implications that could have. The most important thing is that you do actually go out and vote um, whatever your opinion is, whether you want to remain within the Union or you want to make Scotland an independent country, then it's important that you have your vote count and your opinion heard. And if you don't know what your opinion is on the matter, then you should just try and get as much information on it as you can. Speak to teachers, speak to your friends, speak to your youth parliament representatives, join online debates. It's important that you have a say in this because it affects your future. Yeah, I think I yeah. will vote. I think it's kind of our duty to vote because we're like, we're not the youngest people that get to vote. Yeah, it's going to so. be like our future Scotland, so like, it's kind of up to us. Thank you.